Okay. So, um, I would like you to write down the um, five main points that you would give in your, do you know this expression, the elevator pitch? Like if you were in a lift with someone that would give you a million pounds to start your own Suzuki program, <laughs> what would you say were the five most important parts about Suzuki approach that would tell them what it is? Write down five things, please. So if we're in an elevator, a lift, with a rich person and we want them to give us lots of money, uh, we have to persuade them about how brilliant Suzuki is. They don't know anything about it. Um, let's go around the room. It's one thing at a time. At your own, would you like to start us off? <laughs> okay, which one would you say first? Joy? Um, mm, yes! <laughs> Very good. Um, Jackie? Uh, social and community learning. Social and community what? Learning. Learning. Lovely. Sarah? Um, learning music this way will fit them the life's challenges and groups and have one overcome hurdles and ob obstacles in learning anything. Is that too long? Um, I'm just trying to think. So life skills, would we yeah, like condense that down to? I started the pattern for life actually. Good. You know? Self-discipline, great. Jackie? Uh, we start when the children is most receptive to the one physically and mentally. Good. Sarah? Learning music as we learn language. Excellent. I'm going to put the mother tongue approach because that's the sort of standard way to describe that. Excellent. We'll just keep going until we run out, <laughs> which we never will. So we'll be here forever. What did you write? Yes. How, how would we explain that? So if you'd meet someone in a lift and you say to them, every child can, they're like, what? It's actually not a full sentence, is it? Um, can we make it a full sentence? To not put, not put barriers or not underestimate what kids can achieve. Or... So every child can do what in this context? Play an instrument. Learn, yeah. Learn an instrument. Learn an, every child can learn to be learn to be talented. Mm. Good, Sarah. Um, focus on mastery combined with a holistic approach. Mastery and holistic. I mean, I think one could argue. It's definitely not a kind of um, undeniable argument, but I think there's a strong argument to be made that if you are going to teach mastery, that has to be holistic. Because, for example, if you are a person who's not emotionally in touch with your feelings and sensitive to other people's needs, you can't be a master of playing music at the highest level because 
part of playing music. I mean, I'm talking really, really top, not will, what any of our students will ever do, probably. Mm. But, you know, I think it comes hand in hand that the artistry, if you're going to be a true artist, it has to be holistic in some ways. But, yeah, it's like, I mean, all the, the idols of my childhood, like Ruggiero and Ricci and that, they all seem to have been beaten by their dad if they didn't, you know, practice their violin. He used to lie on his bed practicing left hand kicks because that was because he could get away with things like that, you know. Um, but the holistic, but it doesn't mean that you can't become an artist later if you're not taught in a holistic way all the time. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. That at the level of mastery, mm. there is a holistic element. Yeah. But I mean, there are also, like I said, there are also arguments against that. Like, you know, people who end up in prison for doing disgusting things to people yeah. who are also amazing artists. Uh, so anyway, right, master and holistic approach. Anything else? What do you want to daily, add? I, I did daily practice. Good. Thought. Yeah, great. Daily practice. Oh, God, these pens. Flip top marker. I don't even know if that, that's not even a flip top. <laughs> okay. Um, so, what were you going to say, Ram? Daily practice and something about reading? Uh, yeah, reading books about the Wiki blogs, etc. Things like this. But That's not part of yeah, the. Well, it is part of the philosophy, but it's not. It's for maybe we can say like it's kind of like community. If yeah. We join that community, it's automatic that they all come. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. What is not on here to someone who knows nothing about Suzuki? Yes. The, the triangle student pair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good job. Good. Um, repetition and breaking things down into small pieces. Good. I think it's just repetition. That sounds like all of it, and it'll sell with that too. So how can we make it sound not boring? <laughs> um, because you make a very good point. What what does it? Um, you mean there's repetition as part of the approach, but there's repetition as part of the approach because the teachers are. Well, I actually put in one of my things was highly trained. Exactly. Highly trained, trained teachers. Yeah. And parent teachers can be trying to work. Jackie would have just said that about highly trained teachers. Exactly. Highly trained teachers. There's one word that we could say is encompassed by joy, but it's not quite specific enough that is missing. It's so good. There is a word. That the Suzuki approach will not work without. Commitment. That is missing. Commitment would be a good one. Safe environment. Environment. Um. There's the first letter of it. It's connected to environment, joy. Physics. Physics. We can play hangman. Who? No. Positive. Thank you. <laughs> Positive environment. Sorry. Let's on the environment. That's I, I part of environment, yes. I think right environment then is joyful, positive, structured, safe and constructive. Great. So if we were going to nut these down to the main... I'm trying to remember which books. Like some books have 12, some books have 5, some books have 3. Like there are lots of different 
versions of what the core of the Suzuki approach is and the philosophy. But if we're going to nut down which of these you couldn't imagine describing Suzuki without as an approach, let's go with the practical as well as the philosoph philosophical. What, what do you have to have for a person in this lift to have an idea of what it is that you might do with your everyday lives and what the students might do in Suzuki? Yes, I hope so. Yeah, what, how could we make that even clearer? Yeah. Yeah, groups, individual lessons, and community mm -hmm. is sort of a better mm -hmm. way to put it. Good. Um, student teacher and parent to, to make sure that we work together. Absolutely. Uh, the yeah. Well. Okay. Sarah said mother tongue approach, and I think. Very good, yes. Sorry, I didn't hear you, Sarah. We don't have to. We don't have to make it five. Just the ones that you think. Yes. How important is this one? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Isn't that kind of linked in with mother tongue? Maybe that's the same. Um. Yeah. I think it's worth spelling out. Yeah. Um. Daily practice ought to be a student method. I think that we can take environment and that can encompass daily practice, highly trained teachers, positivity, a holistic approach. Um, does commitment have two T's in the middle? No, I don't think so. No, no. it looks weird. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then life skills and self-discipline, the mastery and holistic approach, these things are the things that come as part of that. Mm -hmm. But I think, you know, if you were going to describe this idea to someone who'd never heard of it before, mm -hmm. the ones with the stars are the ones that you really couldn't go without. Uh, and there are a few... There's one more that would make this one very difficult if we didn't have it. Group lesson? Would be very difficult if we didn't also have this as part of our approach. No. Sorry, I didn't hear you. No, I was saying parents, but no, that's not this one. Either. It would be difficult, but we do already have them. I can tell you. Yeah. Okay. Common repertoire. Oh, oh yes. yes. Yeah. It's missing on most of them. It's not normal, is it? Most no, absolutely not. Right. That's why most students can't play with other students until they're good enough to start read orchestra pieces because they don't learn the same pieces. So what could you do? Endless D major and A major scales. Uh, having the repertoire that supports the de development of technique. That means that the students can play with each other. It creates automatic community. You can go to a country on the other side of the world where you don't speak a single word of the same language and those students can communicate with one another by playing together. The pieces sound the same. The piano parts are the same, you know. Um, so the development is built in through the repertoire. Yeah. Sorry, is that coming away? Should we have the beautiful PowerPoint that we have on? So you can you can put in whatever like, you want. I mean, I think um, just to explain. I mean, that would be something that I would like to say that 
our teaching goes beyond music? Yes. So, so what we are actually then trying to say is um, good humans, mm. right? Or citizens. What was Dr. Suzuki's first and foremost goal? It was not to create professional musicians. Mm. It was to help Japan and then the world ideally repair itself from war. Mm. <sighs> Still haven't learnt the lessons. <laughs> motion is we're gonna now practice I'm gonna give you a three minute timer mm -hmm. we're not we're not we're, we're gonna stop the video so it's not a test but I'm just gonna explain to the video so that people watching hi know what we're gonna do um we are going to practice talking to the group as if we are that person and it can be a bit of a conversation but mostly just a spiel to just practice saying the things this is what Suzuki is it's the same kind of thing. Forget the lift and the money. This is what you would say to a parent who's, you meet in a lift, maybe you're trapped in a lift for 10 minutes with a parent who's got a four year old. And you say, oh, I live around the corner. Oh, I'm just starting doing this Suzuki teaching. Oh, what's that? Then what do you say? How does that conversation go? Okay.